So here we have a Lincoln County water flood project in the middle of the state of Oklahoma. Mike Flick's the owner and he's telling us about it. He's selling it, got a price tag on it. <clears throat> so here we go, Mike. We got Mike uh, Flick and he's going to be telling us about his brochure he's made up on his uh, Lincoln County water flood here. So uh, Mike's uh, now keep it laying on the table. So uh, and I'll flip flip it over here. Okay, so. Uh, uh, Go ahead there, Mike. Uh, the cover of this uh, magazine uh, details that this property is in central Oklahoma, uh, northeast of uh, Oklahoma City. It's only about 60 miles from Oklahoma City as to the county line of Lincoln County. Uh, on the initial page there on the cover, uh, as you'll see my photograph there uh, looking at one of the logs. Uh, this basically sets out uh, the risk-reward ratio uh, for and of this property. Um, it, it, it basically takes you back to 1962 quickly and leads you forward on the likely reward. Uh, there on page uh, three, you'll see... Uh, Another location map which details exactly where we are and how to find us. Uh, we go through a, a geological uh, story there on what's the host rock and how this uh, formation was set out and created by Mother Nature. Uh, page four is showing you that this Red Fork feature is actually a point bar uh, sand formation. This point bar, uh, basically like an offshore sandbar, was laid down from a tidal estuary that was north uh, north east of this feature. Um, this sandbar occupies about 400 acres uh, on an east-west uh, direction and probably uh, at most 30, 35 acres uh, north and south total. Um, the, the, the zone had had, uh, when I bought this in 1988, uh, had had four penetrations, uh, one at the discovery well in 62, the follow-up well in 63, a flank well in 74, and in uh, 1984, a well that was drilled between the two discovery wells called the Foreman. So it's only had four penetrations in history, and the distance between these wells is quite significant. It's upwards of 1,800 feet apart, which relative to water flooding is, is really excellent. As we move through uh, more geological information, we get into our petroleum engineering analysis, which uh, I've had a total of seven different petroleum engineers uh, look at this project and advise me. Uh, the uh, isopac map um, clearly shows the um, declination of sand and thicknesses and subsurface datum in that these four penetrations are per pretty much a, a line ball uh, as to the red fork tops, uh, meaning that there's no uh, faulting or no um, hickeys between these wells covering uh, the 400 acres east-west. Uh, a review on uh, page 7, the uh, page. production production history of uh, how much oil's come out of this thing uh, from its initial days forward. Uh, it's always been a gas solution drive reservoir where uh, very little interstitial water. In fact, the gas to oil ratio uh, initially, it was only 350 cubic foot per barrel, uh, with uh, meaning an average uh, load of oil per month. Uh, say you sell 160 barrels, you might make 12 barrels of water, if that. Uh, it was always a natural uh, reservoir, even when I had it. The, the with clean tubing, the well would actually flow off. It was kind of irritating. Until I started putting uh, tubing chokes on it, or you know, flow line chokes on it. Um, as you proceed 
through the thing, uh, we go from a, a basically a page for page uh, analysis of you're on page eight now. Yeah, whereby we're what we're going to do and how we're going to do it as to uh, improving production, uh, not only for the sake of improving production, but increasing water injection. Uh, the big thing my petroleum engineers have lectured me about repeatedly is we've, we've just got to get more water in this reservoir. Well, the purpose of working over these wells is to generate more water and, of course, uh, generate more production. But um, uh, we go to the center spread, which has got a gatefold on it. Uh, this is more maps. Uh, Isopac, uh, the water flood unit. Uh, sand maps. This is page 10 on the right, center Right, 10 spread. and 11. It gate folds out into a uh, excellent cross section of wells dating from uh, 62 right the way through. Uh, well, actually, we've got one there from 1950, 52, uh, which was over on the far uh, east flank. But uh, there's no doubt that all these wells have the same reservoir and the same uh, uh, tops and same uh, close minus datums. So uh, there's no doubt that, that this is all the same animal, there's no faulting, and uh, the closure on this is, is pinpoint accurate because when these previous operators crowded around in 1964, 65, 66, uh, they defined that uh, this point sandbar was uh, limited and uh, there were so many dry holes and dink stinker wells drilled around this thing that uh, it's clear that injecting water into this point bar deposition is not going to enrich anyone off lease. Uh, as we pass through the uh, uh, center spread, uh, we go to pages where we simply describe. Okay, we're on page uh, tw 12 now. 12 and 13. 12 and 13, uh, these, okay. These simply uh, is more information on wells to be worked over, why, uh, plans and strategies, uh, and then we move on to 14 and 15, more of the same where we speak of our central delivery point for natural gas, uh, where we sell into one uh, buyer, uh, which means as a central delivery point, um, we as operator have to pay the mineral and royalty owners uh, for their gas. The oil's different. Uh, Sunoco, our crude oil buyer, they they pay uh, the oil royalties. Um, the booklet simply explains. Uh, each well and what really needs to be done in the way of uh, work over and uh, production enhancement with the sole objective uh, of increasing production and increasing water for injection. Um, in due course, not right now, but in due course, this project will have to have two new producers drill on it and one new injector. Uh, this has been proven by the shape uh, of the feature, uh, the remaining oil to be recovered, and the fact that there's a bunch of oil uh, that's, that's stacked now and will be stacked even more so up in the attic of the formation, the top. And of course over to the east side there's a, a lot of uh, actually undrained, uh, you know, undrained uh, footage of the Red Fork. Uh, as we move here to page 17 we talk about our flank wells that generate water in production. Uh, the Messer 1-33 for one. Uh, got a couple of log sections in there which shows the hog shooter limestone from which it produces. This is kind of rare to find this zone as a, a viable producer in this area simply because uh, it's normally just a marker bed but it's got about six percent porosity in the top It'll make initial production around 110, 120,000 cubic feet of gas and hold there for a long, long time. Also produces uh, a beautiful beer-colored condensate uh, in excess of 65 gravity. 
as we move on to uh, 18 and 19, there's a letter from our attorneys. Uh, they're uh, quoting uh, the facts of our uh, holdings and the fact that what we represent uh, as net revenue and our interests are accurate. And then as we close near the end, it's just a recapitulation uh, on page uh, 19 and 20 of what we want to do to each well in ter terms of production enhancement and uh, work over to also increase water. Um, on the inside back cover, uh, it's just a closure uh, seeking your action uh, relative to uh, what's there. Uh, we've owned and operated this lease since 1988-89. We have very substantial investment in it, and it's just, it's actually started to work, but we got to put some more money in it, and uh, that's why I'm seeking a partner. Okay, great. Well, Mike, thank you for this little preview on your brochure here, and uh, gives us a rough idea about it, and of course, uh, even though I'm looking at a hard copy here, why well, you can download a... <clears throat> copy of this brochure right off of our web page here. We'll have it set up that way. So uh, thank you very much for a presentation this morning and uh, here in Tulsa, Oklahoma and talking about Lincoln County, Oklahoma here. Um,